This week on The Choice. He is just an amazing, amazing, one of God's amazing creatures right there. Hunting is not about the trophy. It's about the challenges that we face as hunters, and it is our choice how we pursue our prey. Hunting doesn't end when you spot your game. That's when the challenge begins. Closing the distance, becoming part of your surroundings, playing the wind, being patient, and waiting for that moment of truth. From the maximum highs to the ultimate lows, there is no way of predicting how things will turn out. For us, it's about the adventure. The journey. The moments that we share as a family. This This is is why why we hunt. hunt. This This is is our choice. Welcome to this week's The Choice. Yeah, this week is part two of us going up to the Crow Reservation, hunting American bison, wild herd. Yeah, the bison burgers last week are finally done, and we can eat our burgers, which would be really rooting in front of all of you guys. Let's all have some eat. This week's lucky logo is Zeiss. Zeiss, (laughs) man. What can you say? The absolute best optics in the world. So watch for the Zeiss logo, and at the end of the show, we'll tell you what to do with that. Now, back out to Montana, back out to the Crow Reservation with Clavin, RJ, all the guys, hunting bison, enjoying all the things, all the activities they got going on out there. And I mean, it's a great trip, so let's get going, shall we? It's almost like the best history trip we could give RJ if you think about it. It was a great summer vacation. How is it? You try it. Can I eat it in front of everyone? We were pretty excited about heading out to the Crow Reservation in Montana and taking RJ and us as a family and being able to enjoy everything that was going on in Crow Nation days was pretty awesome. My highlight though was the parade. You know, the parade, I don't know, hundreds or or a thousand horses, whatever it was, and to see them in all of their natural attire, I I mean, it was just so cool. And to think that RJ back in school is studying this at this time, how cool is that to share that with the family? I'm not proud. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy the parade. I like cotton candy. <laughs> To watch all of all of them wear all that traditional gear, all of like the elk toothed gowns, the dresses made on the elk hide with the elk teeth. The and it's all handmade and it's it's years and years and And it's traditional and it's passed down from generation to generation. And to watch the youth participate in all oh. this and wearing it, and then you have the elders there also doing the same. It was just a really neat experience, and it really kind of puts your mindset back in the day. You know, and, and you start to realize, you, you get those goose pimples, and you, you I, I mean, the history of, of what our country is all about, and where it came from and where it is today is just, wow, it's breathtaking. This was made in back in 1800s um, after Buffalo Days, so they wanted a game to be played. So this they is chose the they arrows. chose the arrows as a game. The point of the game is to hit the target arrow with your set of arrows. These are made out of um, choke cherry trees. These are feathers, own feathers for um, mostly. Uh, hawk, hawk, or any kind of bird that can fly. It's all about family colors and having the having the right to have them. So. Oh really? Yeah, you got to have the right to have them. The your gra- your grandparents have have to give them to you. So basically, mine is blue, 
and then have a striped red and white. Because after the um, guns and after the bullets yep. were made, they, they had no use for arrows, just for basically... Um, so they turned it into the game. Yeah. And it's like anything else, uh, practice makes perfect. Yes, sir. And you practice so much in the wintertime. You practice when it rains. Actually, come with me. Come on. Sure. It's a demon, baby. Aim at the point of the arrow. It's okay. At the bottom. Aim for that, and I guarantee you, hit that target arrow. Drive now. Right, yeah. Just gotta adjust your your Where arm. Your, go, your right? let go, yeah. So you're basically you have this, your point. Oh, so you're looking down the point. point. Yeah. Okay. And then as soon as you have your point, then you adjust your arrow. One of the favorite things that I did at the Carnation Days I was the arrow throwing competition. It. And it. it's kinda neat how they threw it, but I wasn't the best at it. It was kinda tricky. You had to like have a like a perfect throw. You had to hold it like a pencil and you have to throw it like that. How the game kind of worked is you have to throw the target arrow, which is like a multicolored arrow that has a white feather on it, kind of like a normal bow arrow, but uh, a little bit longer and thicker. After you throw that one, you have a multiple amount of other arrows to throw at it. Depending on where you hit it and what hits on your arrow uh, is how many points you get. It's a man's game. Or for now, it's a man's game. Way back when, they, I think back in the 1900s, um, the women, the women used to throw. It's customary for the for, for the ladies and the women and the girls that they cannot touch the arrows. Us women, we're not allowed to touch those arrows. They believe it's bad luck. That is so cool because if that was in our family, I mean, I'd be shooting all the big animals. <laughs> but <laughs> it don't happen. Yeah. <laughs> and I just got to sit there. Not fair. I have a bull tag, and RJ was presented with the opportunity to take a cow. We found a huge herd of buffalo, and we were gonna go after them. The only thing is, is as we got closer to them, we realized that it wasn't really conducive for a bow hunt. It was the middle of nowhere in the wide open, open prairies, nothing to hide behind. And we just said, you know what? I'm gonna hang back further, let RJ go, let him reach out and touch him with his TC. Yeah. RJ. I'm like, really? I didn't really know how to say it, but it was crazy. We walked as far as we could, then we kind of used a little drainage to get to get as close as we could. Uh, we crawled a little bit, got RJ within maybe 140, 160 yards. We were looking at one cow on the left. She was, she was kind of watching us the whole time. I don't know if she thought we were coyotes or just crazy Indians. He, he, he made me so proud because his first reaction was he looked up and he thanked God. And I mean, that's, uh, how can you not be proud of, of, a, of a child when they do that? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't really have any words. It was a big, beautiful thing. It's, people probably think it's ugly, but no way. It's really soft and it, it might work for my dad having hair. I'm not really sure, but it might work. We're out here in Montana with the Crow Nation. Let's just say this is amazing.
the rodeo. You know, I, I believe it takes a a totally different mindset. A person that doesn't care about pain or agony or defeat. I, I mean, jumping on an animal that weighs eight times your own has strength that you can't imagine. To jump on it and go, hey, I'm going to ride this thing. There's our next cowboy right here. And knowing that you're probably going to get bronked off. Oh, you're going to get hurt. You're going to get bumped off, but it's amazing to watch them get on those. I I mean, not only physical strength, but mental strength. You have to make the decision that, listen, I'm going to hold on to this giant animal for eight seconds. It's funny, when you think about a rodeo, you know, you're thinking about a state fair or something like that. And and, but when you're when you're seeing it on the pronation, there was a whole different aspect to it. And knowing, I mean, between a traditional rodeo that we would see elsewhere, but on the Crow Nation, they're riding some of those animals bareback. No saddle. No, I mean, that's that's insane. And for them to have all their traditional gear on, you know, clothing, and I mean, it was just, it was really awesome. Uh, looks like we got two right here. They are 164 yards. Uh, open terrain. Dan, Chaz, and I, we went and we jumped down and we went down to the canyon side and started using that to see if we could get closer to those bisons to get a good shot on one. So we drop down by the canyon, we start working our way back up. And as we're getting closer and we're getting through some of the thick brush there, we're getting closer, we start seeing a bison there. We kept walking and walking where Clavin, we could see Clavin because he was on the other side of us and Kenneth was up there filming as well. And they were doing like hand signals to us to come to find out because there's a bison within 30 yards of us already at this point and we didn't even see him.
So we're standing there and I'm, we're talking to Chaz and all of a sudden I see another bison standing by the bull I just shot. And I'm like, there's another bison over there. Where did he come from? And then all of a sudden. So we're standing there and I'm, we're talking to Chaz and all of a sudden I see another bison standing by the bull I just shot. And I'm like, there's another bison over there. Where did he come from? And then all of a sudden. little bushes are gonna stop him. He bailed us. He left us up there to be killed and charged by buffalo. He totally, he totally took off. He left us up there. All I heard was his tail. If a crow starts running, you follow him. Oh, yeah. We did. Trust me, we, we jumped and we drove by. It was really, really thick brush in there. And we just drove it. We just all jumped in this little pocket like this close. And he's like, shh. And we just sat there and we waited. And then we heard the stampede and we're like, okay. We're down here on the crow res. You guys have a pile of bison, mm -hmm. all wild bison down here. This has just been an unbelievable experience for all of us. Yeah, it's a good way to end the, end the hunt. This is probably the most exciting bison hunt I've ever been on. That's, I'm telling you what, that was just insanely nuts. I mean, my adrenaline the whole time, I mean, going up, go, looking over the cliff as we're walking past it. And we look up at you guys and you guys are like, <laughs> so we're like, okay, well, something else is going on here. So all of a sudden we see him and he's walking at us at 24 yards when I got my shot at him. It was great. And you know what also was really cool is that once we get an animal down like this and we have all this extra help, yeah. <laughs> it's nice, isn't it? It's yep. nice. We're going to need it. He is just an amazing, amazing, one of God's amazing creatures right there. Wow, what a, what a, not only a unique adventure, mm -hmm. but history. Yeah, I mean, here's RJ, he's 13 years old, and we go out there for a bison hunt on the Crow Reservation, and all the history that we got to see, all of the Crow Nation history, Battle of Little Bighorn, I mean, oh. all of it, it was just a great family trip. Ralph actually did like family tourist Ooh. things, which normally when we go on a hunt, we don't get to I don't, do that. No, I don't normally do that, but you know what? You're such a good guy. Thank you, can you say it a little louder to everybody? Yeah. Hey, this week's Lucky Logo was Zeiss. Oh, the ultimate Noptics best in the world. If you happen to see Clear. the Lucky Logo, which was Zeiss, Light. you need to log on to choicetv.com, click on Lucky Logo button, fill out some information, and someone's going to win a new pair of optics from Zeiss, oh. as well as a bunch of other stuff. Next week, we head to Wyoming. Yes, we're going on a very unique hunt, spring bear hunt in the lower 48 on horseback with Bliss Creek in Wyoming. That'd be pretty cool. It gets really cool. Clavin, everyone out there at the Crow Nation, thank you again so, thank much, you so much for having us out there. We really, really appreciate it. And thank you guys for making your choice. The choice. We'll see you next week.